Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ann Brown on the line all the way from Akakeek, Maryland, and we're getting started with our Focus Forward training. As you know, this training is every Saturday morning from 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 945. And so I wanted to make sure that we start on time. If you're coming in from where or listening to this replay, I, we want to say um, welcome, welcome to this training. Hopefully you get some information that you can use and that you could definitely use to move forward, move your business forward. And so this training today is all about, um, is all about just getting, getting you started. And now I know we have some people coming on. And so I just want to make sure this year in 2020, I'm just trying to make sure we start on time and that we end on time. So we're going to have some people jumping in. I realize that and so I just want to say welcome, glad to have you. If you're on live, if you're listening to the replay, no matter what, just so glad to have you in the house this morning and, um, and definitely um, participating in the training. And hopefully you're blessed as much as we are in terms of having you on our team and getting this information. So we're going to get started with our agenda this morning. Uh, let me see. There we go. Our agenda this morning is how to, first of all, how to host a travel party online or live. We're just going to give you the mechanics. We're going to talk about Canva, how to create awesome invitations and flyers. And lastly, we're going to talk about how to invite. So like I said, this training is only about 45 minutes. So we won't be able to get into all of the details, but we want to give you enough information so that you can ask great questions. And if you need more training, we can actually get you you know, give you that as well. Now, how to host a travel party online. If you're actually with me, um, we actually, I wanted to bring your attention to our, if you look at the screen, I wanted to bring your attention to our Facebook page. Hopefully uh, you can actually see this now. I'm going to... Okay, I'm sharing a new screen, which is our Facebook page. Hopefully you're familiar with our Facebook page, the Team Believe and Succeed page. And just so you know, our Team Believe and Succeed page is just for team members. Um, I've recently added a couple of people, um, some accountability partners, just so um, we're all sharing what we're doing with our team and, and, and pushing each other to the next level. But primarily this is for our team, our partners, in the team and things that they are doing. Now, if you look, if you follow along on this left-hand side, you'll actually see the file cabinet. If you click on files, uh, if you are a member of the team, if you are not an actual member of the team, sometimes you can get on the team page, but you won't be able to see the files. If you're finding that you're not able to see the files, then that means we need to add you to the team, usually. Um, however, as you can see, I've added some documents recently, how to hold it, how to host a travel party, hosting a travel party, business reception. And the one that I want to talk about today, and you can look at any of these, but here, how to host a travel party, business reception, or grand opening. Because um, you can call it whatever you want to call it. However, the, most of the mechanics are still the same. We also host what's called a, a launch call. And a launch call is an opportunity for you to get people on and, them to, and for us to tell them about you, your launching your business. But right now, when you go to this document and open it up, um, you'll see hosting a successful travel party. So, um, so you just, no matter what your theme, First of all, you can create a theme. Um, it can be a coffee, coffee and tea travel party. A theme can be anything. It can be a Chinese food travel party. It can be a travel party from Italy and you, you serve pizza and lasagna and spaghetti. It can be, um, it can be a, a, a sports travel party. It, it really doesn't matter. Whatever you're into, whatever you're interested in, you, it can be a Tiffany's travel party. I know I'm trying to do that in all the teal colors and then maybe um, offer a gift from Tiffany. However, it can be whatever you want. No matter what your theme is, the travel party should flow the same. First of all, you, you should plan for your event to be only about an hour, only about an hour from beginning to end. 
And so that means that you want to truly, truly plan. And once you get started, keep going and keep on agenda. Do not let people take you away from your agenda. Part of that is minimizing your distractions. Ensure small children and pets are not in the area where you're hosting the event. They put those, put small children, pets, um, TV, radios, other things, put them away. Why? Because number one, that extends the time of your travel party. And number two, it takes your attention away and also takes your guest attention away. So you want to make sure that you're minimizing the distractions because you want everybody's attention. You want to get in and you want to get out of that. Um, and you want to have it quick, succinct, and know exactly what you want to do. So make sure your laptop or your TV and your speakers are set up in advance so people can see and hear the video. We like to set things up, test the equipment before people get there so that we know and sit in various places of the room so that we know how people will see various things. If we're actually standing and doing the presentation or we're playing a video, it makes a difference. So we might, you know, we may adjust the speakers so everyone can hear. But you want to make sure that, number one, you have a sign-in sheet. And you'll find the sign-in sheet, again, in the file cabinet. Um, print that out and have your guests sign in. You want to have name tags. Now, you want to have different colored name tags. You want to have one name tag for guests and one name tag for team members. Now, why do you want to do that? So you can identify the guests in the room, number one, and so that you can call them by name. You can call everybody by name. And that just helps the presenter. It helps everybody in the room because now they know who they're speaking with. And let me tell you, there's no better sound to anyone than their name. So now to be able to call their name and speak with them, it speaks volumes. They don't really care if they have the name tag on. So if you're looking at the name tag, say, oh, Barbara, you know, I love your hairstyle. Oh, hey, Barbara, I'm so glad you're able to make it. Hey, Barbara, it helps with mixing and mingling. But guess what? As you're actually doing a presentation or as you're actually navigating various things, you want to have the, your teammates identified because, you know, during that time, you're trying to remember various things and various names. It's great to be able to call a team member out and say, hey, or, or whisper in their ear, hey, can you go um, outside in the garage and get a bag of ice and, and let them bring it in or have a team member, hey, can you pull the ice cream? Let's say you, you, you're serving ice cream and cake. Can you pull the ice cream out the freezer for me? So, you know, so that way you, you know who your support is. So those name tags are very, very, very important. Your travel party surveys. Those are very important because you want to begin building your clientele. You want to always, always have travel party surveys. Let me tell you again, you want to always have travel party surveys. You want to have a stack already printed out at your home. You want to have a stack in your purse, have a few in your purse that you can get. You want to be Johnny on the spot with those travel party surveys, getting information, getting market information so that you can utilize it for your business. So when people come in, you want one of the first things you want them to do is to fill out that travel party survey. You also want to have travel party games and prizes. We have travel party Scrabble. We have a word um, word find. We have um, a travel party questionnaire. I mean, all kinds of games that you can play um, as you're waiting for your travel party to begin because, you know, some people will be early and some people will be late. Some people will be early and some people will be late. So that's why we want to talk about it now. You want to have your Surge 365 member and SBA applications. Now, you can find those in your back office and we'll show you where those are. But you want to have those applications on point when you have a live party. Why? Because you're going to be giving those out and asking people to fill them out unless you have a plethora of laptops or computers. If you have a laptop that you can give someone at the end of the presentation, that's cool too. But generally, if you've got 10 guests, you nine times out of 10 don't have 10 laptops. So what you want to do is definitely have those applications printed out. And you want to make sure you have ink pens. Uh, I don't know how many times I've gone where people have given me an application but never gave me a pen. And so you want to make sure your guests have the applications and ink pens. And that means that may mean that you have to go to CVS or um, Office Depot or Staples to buy a container of ink pens. And, and 
buy, buy something inexpensive, something you don't mind people walking away with. You can get like one of those big buckets of ink pens. And I know I got one big bucket and it's lasted me for, for at least two or three years now. And I take the various pens to various events. But the great thing about it was it was a one-time investment. They're the simple big pens, but they write well. And I use them over and over and over again. Now you can get personalized pens if you want to. Um, however, I tend to just use the, the big pens. Um, but yeah, I've seen some people who've used the personalized pens as well. And, and so it's totally up to you and your brand and what you want to do. You can also get a personalized event flyer. You want to make sure that you are on the group flyers and you've got your group team, your group flyers with your name and your information on it. So when you give it to them, they're able to book, to book that trip and you're able to get paid the commissions. So if you don't have your group, your personalized group flyers yet, get in touch with myself or Vincent Payton to get your flyers for the team group events where you actually get paid for it, for actually, um, putting someone on one of those trips. Now, if you already, if you also have a, tri have a trip, then maybe you already have established your cruise or something like that, you wanna make sure that you, you've given out your flyer as well. First and foremost, you wanna promote your own event. So um, especially, let's say that you've got a cruise coming up, so you're having a cruise party. Well, that whole party is about your cruise. So you might have Death by Chocolate, which is something that they do on a cruise. You might have various, um, various um, foods from wherever it is you're cruising to. I mean, there are all kinds of things. You might want to do various activities or have a, have a trivia game from, from where you for where you're actually cruising to. It doesn't matter. The whole part is you want to have something to give them to um, that to take away. You always, you always want your guests to take away something about your business. You also want to give your business cards and your business cards should have your Vortex site on it. That's something else that you can do while they're there, actually set up their Vortex um, sites and then it's so that they can kind of access um, your discounted site, because you want to give those away to anybody and everybody. So this is a great time to give away your Vortex. So you also want to have flyers for the next event. For instance, let's say we know we have our Baltimore event coming up. You want to let them know about that. You, you know, we might, we have our convention coming up in January, 2021. So you might have developed a flyer about that, just a reminder. But nine times out of 10 for your guests, you want to invite them to the next event. And generally in our area, the next event is a weekly meeting. It might be either Tuesday night or Thursday night. So you want to take them from your travel party to a bigger event. And the weekly meeting is typically a bigger event where they get to meet even more people. Just know that most people need five to seven exposures before they get started in our business. So if you want to have things that you can continuously invite them to. So you want to prepare your refreshments in advance and have them on the table, but you want to have them covered up until the end of the party, all the food. Now, you might want to have your, your drinks in a punch bowl or in one of those thermoses things so people can kind of serve themselves. Um, but you, want to, you might want to monitor that as well because you definitely don't want anyone having to stand up and go to the restroom during your presentation. So um, you want to, you know, maybe give them a little a light drink when they come in. Um, but you want to keep it simple. In, in terms of your food, you don't want to have this whole buffet of things. No, no, no. You want to definitely keep it simple. Maybe something salty, something sweet, and something wet. That's what I always remember. Something salty, maybe some chips, something sweet, some cookies, and something wet. Now, you can also add maybe some chicken wings in there or maybe a pasta salad or, you know, if you wanted to, you could add something else. However, just keep it simple. Don't get this whole spread of food because that's that's just that's too much. And people will will actually judge themselves by you and say, "Well, I can't do that. I'm not going to prepare a whole spread of food for people." And so you don't want them to do that. You want them to know that, hey, if you put out some chips and dip, that's cool. It's chips and dips and finger sandwiches. That that's fine. Or just chips and dip, whatever it is. You know, it's all good. So. 
Again, you want to eliminate distractions. Make sure your kids, pets, your cell phones, your house phone, put away so that you you definitely um, don't, you're not going to be pulled from your guests. Now, what I tend to do is give a 30-minute window. And what I mean is if I plan for the party to start at 4.30, I put 4 o'clock on the invitation, especially in the D.C. area. There's so, there's typically traffic issues. There's something, you know, sometimes things go on that you can't help. You know, you might be stuck in a store or, you know, doing something. So I tend to give people a 30 minute leeway before I actually start. And so what that means is that I give them, I say, okay, come in at four, but I, I don't, I don't intend to really start the, everything until 430. What do I do during that time? If someone comes at four, then I have them start filling out the survey. I, I have them start doing the, the games. And I have them mixing and mingling and doing various things because I know my actual start time is 4.30. And that gives more people time to come in. So you always want to start on time. You want to start on time at 4. And what I mean is that even if no one's there at 4, go ahead and put your music on. Don't be running around putting your music on when people get there. No. Have the have the have it already set. Have your music on. Have your pens and paper, your games and stuff out. So when they come in, bam! Yeah, let me take your coat and let them listen to music. Oh, I need you to fill out this survey for me. Oh yeah, I need you. To, now we're gonna play a game, and and I'm gonna put it in a drawing, and you win a prize. Or I, the first person who finishes the game wins the prize. No matter, you make the rules. So no matter what you decide to do, you want to definitely. Um, you want to let them know, but you want to go for those people who come early, you want to go ahead and get them started on something to kind of move it along. So you want to start on, on time, get them signed in and give them a name tag. That's the first thing you do. Have your sign in sheet right there. Tell them to sign in. You get them a name tag and then you encourage them to mix and mingle and play the games and that kind of stuff. Now, some people may not do the survey. Some people may not play the games. They might just decide, just mix and mingle. That's okay. But make sure you get a survey from everybody that attends. No matter what, get a survey. Remember, no food until the end of the party. So they may come in and say, girl, you got some chips? You got some nuts or something? Mm -mm. No food until the end of the party. They can have a little drink, a little beverage, especially if their throat is dry. But no food until the end. Don't wait for anyone. You know, sometimes that friend that will call you and say, girl, I'm about 30 minutes out. Well, if it's 4.30, it's time for your travel party to start. When they get there at 5, they'll just come on in and they will have missed half the information. However, don't sit there and wait an additional 30 minutes for this person that wasn't on time. Don't penalize the people that were on time waiting for the people that are not on time. So make sure you honor the time of the people who were there. At your start time, ask everyone to have a seat. Ask them to turn their cell phones off or put them on vibrate. Now, you can do this whether you're online or whether you're actually a live travel party. At your start time, you want to ask everybody to pay attention. Ask them to turn their cell phones off or on mute or put them on vibrate. Then you want to welcome your guests and tell them your brief introductions. Just say, hey, welcome. I'm so glad you came to my travel party. I'm so excited. I'm looking forward. My husband and I are looking forward to going to Hawaii next year and having a good time. And we'd love to take as many people as we possibly can with us. And this business is going to help us go more affordably and even get reward credits to go on our next trip. And so just be, say something exciting. You know, hey, I'm looking forward to paying off all my bills by the money I'm making through this business. And I want you to be able to do the same. Or, hey, I'm, I'm going to, I got to get a new car. So I'm working this business to be able to get my down payment for my car. What they, they have unlimited $1,000 bonuses. And I plan to get a couple of those in the next few weeks. Or, hey, you know what? I am. I want to be, I want to contribute to putting a new roof on my church. So I'm, I'm pushing for that $10,000 bonus and I'm going to give $5,000 to the church and I'm going to keep $5,000. So 
You get it? It's all about you. What it is that you want to accomplish, why you got started. It might be travel. Hey, I want to take my friends and family to Guam. It might be, you know, it might be monetary. It might just be to be able to help somebody else, altruistic. So no matter what, you want to welcome your guests and just tell them why you got started briefly. Then you want to introduce your presenter and or the video. And so you can say, hey, you're about to see why I am so excited. You're going to see how you can have fun, make money, get 100% of the facts and help other people do the same. And so that just uses the four key areas, fun, money, facts, and, and help. And so that's a great way to introduce people to either the, the speaker or the video, whichever one that you decide you want to do. Personally, I think you should always try to get your team leader or a speaker in the room or at least on um, virtually so that they can, um, they can feel questions and get a feel for your crowd. Okay, so your team leader will then do the presentation or they'll play the SERS 365 pre presentation. Before they get on, they'll briefly introduce themselves, tell why they got started, some of the things that they, that they truly enjoy, and then they'll get started with the presentation. Now, during this time, it's so important that you're paying attention. If you, when, you're, when your sponsor or your team leader is doing the presentation, you don't want to go out in the back room or go in the garage or talk to somebody else. Mm -mm. You want to be in that room, front and center. You want to be sitting there taking notes because eventually you're going to have to do the presentation. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention, that you're taking notes because this is a learning moment for you as well. You want to make sure that you are, that your guests are taken care of because they're going to follow you. If you pay attention, they're going to pay attention. If you don't pay attention, they're not going to pay attention. So you want to make sure. That's why you got all your food and everything prepared in advance. You want to make sure that your butt is in the seat, front and center, and that you're sitting there looking at the, looking at the, present, the presenter, taking notes, doing everything that they need to do. Now, you might not want to sit in the front row because if you do have to get up, that might be distracting. But no matter what, when they see you, you want to make sure that they see you watching the presentation because if they see you paying attention, then you're going to pay attention. And that just answers a whole lot of questions. It helps the travel party go smoothly because there is nothing more annoying than someone asking a question at the end of the travel party that you covered during your presentation. That's a waste of time. That's a waste of time. And so you want your travel party to go quickly, go, make sure it goes succinctly. So that means you, we all have to play team. We all have a role to play. And so your team members that you actually invited are going to be sitting there watching the presentation as well. You want to have, to have pen and paper so everybody can take notes. Everybody can write down what it is. So you want to make sure that you are paying attention, your team are paying attention, and your guests are paying attention. Now, another thing that you can do is, and, and especially, let me, let's say, now let's say that you're online. When you're online, you want to make sure that you're not chatting with your guests while the presentation is going on. That number one is distracting, but you want them to get the information. So you want to eliminate all the chats, all the other chats that are going on. Um, you want to make sure that they are paying attention to the presentation and encourage them to take notes, have pen and paper and take notes as well. So give you, so after that, um, you want to, um, Oh, you want to make sure you, okay, so you've edified your team leader and also the presentation. They are now doing the presentation. You're paying attention. Um, and then they're going to ask for testimonies. So you might have a couple people in the room who, can, who have achieved some success. They might have gone on a trip and saved some money. They may have... Um, they have, may have booked, some, booked a trip for someone and got a commission, or they may have actually earned a $1,000 bonus. No matter what, you want to try to have some people in the room that can offer a testimony at the end of your travel party. Then give your guests, a, a, give your guests an application in eight pins. That's why you have the applications printed out. And so at the end of that, you want to give your guests, especially be prepared because you're, you're, whoever's doing the 
whoever's doing the presentation is probably going to say, oh, yeah, the hostess has a free gift, has a gift for you. And at that time, you give them the gift of the application and a pen. And during that time, once that happens, your your leadership or your, your travel, whoever's doing your travel party should say something like this. It might not be verbatim, but it might be something like this. Uh, we'd love to have you as a part of our group, but it's totally up to you. We're healing nations with vacations, and we'd like for you to join our cause. Maybe you have made enough money. You're okay with your financial situation, and your bank account looks exactly like you want it to. Maybe you're okay with your tax return, and you don't know what to do with any other tax refund. Or maybe you have already traveled the world and you've seen everything you want to see. You've taken your family everywhere they want to go. If so, then maybe this isn't for you. Congratulations. You are doing better than 80% of the United States population. But if that's not you and you want to travel, you want to create a better financial situation and get some more of those tax refunds, get started today. We find that most people can usually identify themselves in one of three categories. One, I like what I saw and I'm ready to get started. Number two, I have some questions or, you know, I just don't have the money right now. And number three, thanks, but no thanks. But I will get a free vortex and support you. Let me repeat that. Number one is I like what I saw and I'm ready to get started. Number two, I have some questions or right now I'm between blessings. I don't have the money. Or number three, thanks but no thanks, but I will get a free vortex and support my friend today. We simply ask you to tell us your number, whether you're number one, two, or three. That's basically it. And then we'll go into answering questions. they say, hey, we want to make sure that we answer any questions for you. You have that application. Let me help you fill it out. What name do you want on your chest? And if they're standing there staring at it, then that generally means that they have some questions. What address do you want them to send your check to? If they're not writing, then they're not really ready to get started. So there's some objections that you may need to cover. Um, so you might want to say, okay, so you'll be getting our top package today, right? So let's get you in the system. And at that point, if they say, oh, no, 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 then we have some objections. Or maybe they're number three. You might want to ask them, what's your number? Are you a number one or number two or number three? If they say number three, then just say, okay, give me this application and let me get you set up with your vortex. And that's cool. It's still a win-win because now you're getting a customer. And you want to make sure that as, as you get them set up, that you're actually giving them the information so that they can log into your Vortex account and book travel. So no matter what, you at the end of the event, you want to invite everyone to the next event. Everybody. Give everyone your flyers to invite them on a trip or one of our group trips. You want to invite them to a conference call, a webinar, a weekly meeting, a travel party, a Super Saturday, whatever is going, going on next. For, for instance, right now, we have Baltimore coming up. So at all of our travel parties, we should be inviting people to join us in Baltimore or join us for our weekly meeting in the DC metropolitan area. We have two weekly meetings, one on Thursdays and one on Friday, one on Tuesdays and one on Thursdays. So we should be inviting people. Okay, boom, you got to come out to the weekly meeting because we build our business from event to event to event. So you want to make sure that you are aware of the various events, which is one of the reasons why I send out the newsletter every week so that you are aware of various events that you can invite your guests to. So when you have a travel party, you can now, um, yeah, in fact, you can print out the newsletter. So this is an example of the newsletter that we get every week. And although it doesn't have all the events on, it gives them a plethora of things to choose from, conference calls, um, various events, if there's a travel party, um, basically whatever I can remember, I try to include it in the newsletter. So you want to make sure you invite people to your next event. And then last but not least, thank everybody for coming. Make sure you give them a genuine thanks and a hug. Tell them that this is the end of the party. They're welcome to have refreshments and get home safely. Um, so you want to make sure that you tell them that this is the end. You want to make sure if your party was supposed to start at 4.30, that you're ending it at 5.30. 
And so because they're going to remember that, they're going to remember the beginning and they're going to remember the end. And you'll find that some people look at their watch and say, okay, that's right, right at about an hour. In their mind, they're trying to figure things out and say, okay, maybe I can do this. So you want to make sure that you stay on task and keep it moving with your travel course. Sometimes it doesn't take the whole hour. Um, sometimes, it, especially if there are no questions, you can just move forward. And just because there are questions, you want to keep moving. People still might be filling out their applications, but you want to keep it moving and invite and thank everybody for coming. Make sure you end your travel party when you say it's going to end. And that means that keeps you credible and it keeps the travel party going. So that, the, those instructions are right here on our team page in the file cabinet, host a travel party. Um, there are several instructions that basically say the same thing. However, you want to read this and, and actually host your travel party. Now, the next thing that we're going to cover is Canva. Now, I know you're probably saying, well, wait a minute, Ann. Um, what is Canva? Canva is a software that we use to... I thought I had a uh, stop share. Canva is a software that we use to um, to be able to actually create flyers and all kinds of things um, with our within our business. And so it is very. I find it to be a very user friendly tool. A Canva. Um, I'm already logged in, but once you set an account, it's absolutely free. Go to www.canva.com and set up your free account. Free. Okay, now, what I, when I got started, what I did is I actually went to templates. I just looked at the templates, and it pulls up various templates, and I, I saw one that I liked, and I just modified it. So that's the easiest, easiest way to get started. They have all kinds of templates. You can either create your own logo, you can do a presentation, you can do a post if you want to, but nine times out of 10, I use flyers and cards. Now let's say that I wanted to do a little birthday card or the little birthday post or anything like that because you actually, let me go back. They actually have an, a way for you to, I wanna show you all the categories. Now they have posters, they have logos, um, they have presentations, they have flyers, they have cars, they have infographics, and infographics is where you're putting a whole bunch of information on one page. But guess what? You can design your own business cards if you want to. Oh, they just all, they just added this area: t-shirts. They have resumes. They have brochures if you want to create your own brochure. They have invitations. They have desktop wallpapers. They have book covers for those of us writing books. They have certificates. So if you want to create your own certificate, they have menus, they have letterheads, CD covers, magazine covers. So if you want to create your own magazine cover, ID cards, newsletters, calendars, social graphics, photo collages. So if you want to put some trip photos together on a postcard, you can do that. Postcard, labels, announcements, gift certificates, tags, programs. You can design your own tickets. You can do your own bookmarks. You can do a class schedule, coupons, reports, proposals, media kits, worksheets, invoices, recipe cards, rack cards, um, planners, report cards, letters, lesson plans, web banners. If you're creating your own web page and you need a web banner, you can do it there. Web ads, if you want to create your own ad, you can do that as well. So it's all right here in Canva. And what I do, I'm telling you, most of the time, most of the things that you see is from already, ex already, ecstat already established templates. So let's say that I wanted to do a flyer. So I, I may go, and it's Valentine's Day, if I like this flyer, I'll just click on it. And when I click on this flyer, I have an opportunity to now, because another reason why I like the flyers is that most of the, by, by using the flyers, they're, they're free. Um, a, a template is generally free. So, you know, now when you start using some of the photos and stuff, there's a cost. But look, 
I mean, you just choose what you want, what you want to do. And let's say I want to use this template. It's set up for me. Let's say right here, I want to, this might not be a Valentine's Day mixer. Let's say I just want to say happy, happy Valentine's Day. Okay. And so I see that that is, that is too big. So I can just make it smaller. If I like that or if I don't like that, I can play around with it however, however I want to do it. But the great thing about it is you can play around, celebrate the day of heart. So let's say I want to keep that. And then let's say 2, 14, 17. And instead of this 7 p.m., 71 part lane, I might say believe and succeed group. And then that'll be it, and I'll save it, and then I'll save it as a JPEG. Let me show you. Right here is where you download it onto your, onto your, onto your computer. Or sometimes I do this. I have the app, and I do it on my, um, on my phone. And so I, either way, I just save it as a JPEG file, and, and then I use it. Now, I also, um, let's, let's say that I, I don't want to save it. Um, I can just basically go to go back home and decide to do something else. I, and you can also create your own design if you want it. Now, let me tell you, it can get a little sticky. And if you're not familiar with, with desktop publishing, sometimes it, it, it can take a little longer. When I started this, it took me a long time to get something out. But now I can basically get something out relatively easily. Yesterday, we actually, we're hosting a, an event for Nick's mom's, her, her birthday. And so I had an opportunity. I knocked this flyer out before I left work yesterday. I went online and found, found photos of the restaurant and what they serve. This is a photo that I had from her at Christmas. And so we're doing a birthday celebration for her. So I actually did this flyer and did this template myself. However, like I said, if you don't necessarily want to do a flyer, when you see me posting some of the things, it's generally cards. I do the card size um, ad, a flyer, or whatever I need. And so you can actually just, you know, this one is, a, is, is one where you can actually input, put your photo in here take this photo out and put, put your photo in. Um, whether you want a birthday, an invitation, you want to do an invitation card, you can, you know, you can see all of them here. Um, great, this is a great card for my sorority. Um, and so, I mean, they have so many things and it just makes you look really good, just really good and professional. It's very, very easy to do. And y'all, most of the stuff is free. Now, let me tell you, when you start getting into photos, some photos you have to pay for, some photos are free. And so you just have to, if they have this little uh, dollar sign in them, then that means that is something you have to pay for. If they have this little crown, that means that it's only for premium users. But let me tell you, they have so many free photos. Look at this one. This was free. This is free. This is free. And now what I find that um, is I get more information when I use my laptop as opposed to my phone. Um, I have to pay attention. They don't have, it doesn't pop up free, free on my phone. I have to kind of click on it, which takes a little more time. However, as you can see, this one, if there's a cost. This one, there's a cost. So you just have to look at the photos and then you can search. Let's say that you want to search for parents, photos of parents. So this is a free photo. This is a free photo. This is free. This is free. Usually the free photos are up top and then you start getting into your paid photos. Um, and generally, so it, it all depends. So let's say whatever it is you're looking for, if you're looking for travel, which is our industry. Uh, you can, you know, if you wanted to have a, a wine tasting, you could do, here's one that would be great for a wine tasting. Here's a free photo as well. So you can really play around with it, pull these images in, and thousands of images that you could use and really create some great invitations, some great, um, some great flyers, some great, you know, some great stuff for your travel parties. And it's free, it's free. So just play around with it. And guess what? You can't break nothing. And if it don't look right, start over or find another design. I don't know how many times I've found another design 
Um, so, you know, if you look here, these are designs that I've created. Some of those you've seen before. This is what I created for Stephanie to say congratulations. I think I just did that at work. I put the little picture on there, then I wrote on it. Uh, this is the design I came to, to welcome Katrina Ellis to our team. Um, this is my dream trip survey. And so I, I just create various things. This is the last invitation that we did for the, um, for the Olive Garden. Um, this is my newest um, bucket list, submit the survey online. Uh, this one, this, this one actually did real well. Um, this one got, got quite a bit of traction and quite a, pe quite a few people actually um, um, saw this. But you know what, this is really, honestly, this was really more of a for sympathy uh, a sympathy card, and I just put our, if I liked it, and I put our information on it. And uh, a lot of people did dial in and listen to the call and, and kind of con got in contact with me for questions. So, I mean, it's all about you and your creativity. You can just put something together real fast, or you can, if you wanted to be a little more creative, you can do that too. But uh, you don't necessarily have to get a desktop, pay the desktop publishing cost for everything that you need. So that's just a brief um, introduction of Canva, C-A-N-V-A.com. I got this from, from convention. That's why you want to go to convention. They actually, at our Surge 365 convention last year, they talked about a lot of the stuff that they do. They do it in-house and through Canva. Um, now they have a premier um, package, so they are getting all the premier features. However, they said, hey, for the basic stuff, you can do it really simply via Canva, which is another reason why you want to go to convention, because you might get information that could absolutely change your business and change your life. So I'm getting out of Canva now and logging out, going back to our home page, and also going back to, I'm going to go back to, our um, our agenda. Now, when you actually look at the um, the next thing we need to go through in the next two minutes is how to invite. Now, I think we can do this. This these scripts were provided by Janice Parker, and you I just posted a training from her, and I, she where she actually goes into utilizing these scripts. And, um, and so it talks about inviting different people, not using the same script all the time, because you know you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna meet people from various places. So the first one is for people that you know. You might call somebody up and say, girl, look, you know, like my sisters, I just say, hey, what you doing Thursday at 730? I need you to come to this um to this meeting with me, I think it could help you make some money. Or you said you wanted to take the girls to Disney. I think this is something that can help you do that. Um, I need you to come with me. And so that's that's how my inviting is for my cousins, for my sisters, for people that I know, for good friends. Um, so I don't go into, oh yeah, well, I've got something that I think could help you. Uh, -uh. They know better, they know me better. So I may call them up and just say, hey, you know what, here. Uh, I, I need you. To, I need you to come with me, seven thirty. You want me to pick you up, or you will meet me there. And that's basically how that how that happens. Uh, or I may say, you got Tuesday or Thursday at seven thirty. Which one is best for you? Or hey, I need you to meet me online, um, nine o'clock Friday night. Uh, are you available? They say no, and I say, okay. What about nine o'clock Thursday night? They, oh yeah, I can do it Thursday. Okay, cool. I need you to meet me online. I'm gonna send you the link. But look, I need you to meet me online nine o'clock at Thursday, Thursday night because I'm telling you, I think this could really help you. I need you to have pen and paper and listen because I think this is something that could help you. Does that make sense? Okay, it's 945. Now, people who are reds, people who are reds are people that you're afraid to talk to. It is 945. I want to be, I want to be conscious of our time. This training is only supposed to be 45 minutes. So if you have to go, we are recording and you'll be able to leave, hear the rest of this. I'm just going to go through a few more scripts. Um, but you, the, 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 this training, I just posted this training on our Facebook page. Um, it was done by Janice Parker. And, um, and so definitely review that information on how to invite effectively. But this is just something that we can do. So if you got to go, thank you for joining us. Thank you for, for being a part of the team. And thank you for definitely being a part of this training. If you don't have to go, 
give me maybe about two more minutes and we're just gonna go through these scripts. Now, res, res are people that you might be afraid to talk to. Everybody is afraid to talk to someone. I know I've got people on my list that I'm a little nervous to talk to about our business. And in my, it's in my head, it, it, it plays into what they may think about me or how are they going to react and are my feelings gonna be hurt? But that's all, that's all internal. That's my thing that I have to work on. However, a way to invite them is to say, hello, you know what? I really admire you and I'm a little nervous for calling you right now. Just be honest. You're very successful and I'd like to ask you to do me a favor. Would you please take a look at something I'm excited about and just tell me how you would proceed if you were me. Now, I was talking to Janice about this and I said, well, I usually say, well, can you give me your opinion? She said, no, because then they're listening to it differently. And at the end of that, they're going to give you their opinion about this, their opinion about that. And I said, she said, but if you say, just tell me how you would proceed if you were me, they changed their listening because now they're listening positively and say, okay, if I was doing this, what would I do? And a lot of times in that evaluation, they, begin, they talk themselves into it. They then begin to say, oh man, okay, I, could, I would do this and this, could, this mic could work. Oh my goodness. And so now them doing that analysis gives them another opportunity to think about it seriously and think about if it's something that could work for them as well. And usually they'll come back with, you know what, if, sometimes they'll say, well, you know, if I wasn't doing this, this, and this, I would definitely do this. Or if I wasn't doing this, I would do this. I remember my father told me one day, he said, if I had to become an entrepreneur all over again, I would do the type of business that you're doing. And he said, because building a business from the grassroots, being an entrepreneur, um, and with the time and energy and everything, and not having a team, having to do everything myself, and he said, I would much rather, I would have much rather built this type of business model. And that really, that really, really, um, just really inspired me because he's been, an, he was an entrepreneur for a long time. And I tell you, watching him go through the highs and lows was really, was really amazing. So, and anyway, so you might be surprised at what that person will say. Um, and so don't be afraid to speak with them. Another person, your peer group, people that you're comfortable with. Now, she, she, Janice actually um, explained a very good tactic. She said when it's people that you, com com people in your peer group, you might want to do something like whisper, um, especially if it's somebody at church or somebody that you really know, whether the other people are around or not, you want to pull them on their arm and say, listen. I may have stumbled onto something, but I don't want everybody to know about it. We can make a lot of money, but I want you to come check it out and whisper. Because when you whisper, that automatically means it's exclusive. It's a secret. You're not telling everybody. So now they're feeling some kind of way because you're sharing it with them. And it's like, look, if I can get us in on Thursday night at 730, can you come? They're only looking for certain types of people and which is why I can't invite everybody. So can you make it? And they're like, okay, yeah, girl, let me look at my calendar, I think I can. Now, you know, if you talk to them about Avon, if you talk to them about Mary Kay, if you talk to them about, you know, vitamins and stuff, they probably gonna say, girl, look, what is it? You already, I done been to the Mary Kay, Avon, what is this? So, you know, you gotta determine you got to be ready to what it is that what you're who it is that you're inviting because if you've invited them to many other things they might they may not accept it as 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 freely as someone that you're newly inviting so what about blue people who you look up to so you might say something like you know what we work together and i i encourage you to really be cautious of of, of um uh, talking to people that you work with because sometimes work can get around and if, if you have a no solicitation policy at your job, it, you can get in some serious trouble. You don't want to mess up things at your job until you're at a position where you can walk away. So you might say, hey, you know we work together or you know we're in church together or you know, um, you know we're, in the, we're in the boys and girls club together and I admire your work ethic. You're a really sharp person. I think we can make some serious income working together. There's an exclusive event with key people coming up that I'd like to invite you to. 
I'm only looking for a certain type of person. If I could get you in for this event, would you come? I also want you to remember that is if I would you, if I would you. That is so important to remember. And because when you're asking and you're inviting out. Now, what about that person that's skeptical, nosy, negative, somebody who's, you know, we all got those family members that just won't come to see what you're doing. Are you thinking about, no, 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 I don't have time. No, I'm not into this. I don't even travel. I don't have money to travel. You know, just all the da 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 Well, guess what? If you want their support, you know, I know I have some cousins that I just show up because it's, when you're taking pictures of your travel party, you want as many people there as possible. Because when you post those pictures, when you show pictures, oh, yeah, so many people came to my travel party. We had a great time. Guess what? Now, people that you that didn't come wish they had been there. So the next travel party, they're going to come. So you want to try to get as many people as possible at your travel party. People in the pictures, when they see the pictures, they don't know that they said no. They just know that you had a packed travel party and they missed it. So for those people, you might just say, hey, look, I need you, I need you to come in the room. Like I know some of my cousins. I, look, I need y'all to come. I need y'all to come because I need, you know, I need to make sure I got enough people. And Janice Parker actually gave this script and I thought it was priceless. She said, look, <clears throat> I need 10 people to come. If I get 10 people to come, three will say yes. I need you to come to be one of my no's. Come on now. <laughs> you giving them the way out. I need you to come to be one of my no's. <laughs> I thought that was amazing. But you know what? It worked. It worked. I asked my cousin to come to be one of my no's, and he actually signed up and got started and is still active today in Florence, South Carolina. So they may come and intend to be one of your no's, but find something that they like. And before you know it, they are now in your business. So don't just think that although you invite them to come to be your no's, you want them to come in the room and hear what it is that you're doing. And that's why when they're in the room, you can't be having a sidebar conversation with them. You got to be front and center, taking notes. You got to be paying attention because they're going to do whatever you do. And so another thing with inviting, as you're doing these surveys and stuff, you're, gonna, you're going to begin to determine who you're going to invite to things at your home and who you're going to invite to a weekly meeting. For instance, if you met someone out and about, you might invite them to a, you know, to a weekly meeting. Um, someone, you know, or maybe a, you know, something where, where people are going to be, maybe a diner, you want to have stuff. Um, at, at, you know, at Starbucks or Denny's or something like that. You may not want um, people that you're meeting um, just out and about. You may not want them in your home. And especially if you're a single, single woman, you may not want them in your home. So especially as a single woman, as you invite them to, and, or a married woman, as you invite them to an event, Usually there are other men there that can kind of, if you tell them what's going on, that can kind of watch out for you, make sure you get back to your car, make sure. Because as you're out in the marketplace and you're meeting various people, they may seem nice, but you don't know everybody's background. So you want to definitely um, be conscious of who you're bringing into your home and who you are actually inviting to events, which is another reason why I, I send out the newsletter to give you options. Um, to invite to uh, options of things to invite people to because you or you might want to meet them or one on one for coffee or in a public place uh, or maybe at the library as opposed to um, meeting them in your home. So you want to keep that in in mind and just in terms of inviting. We have so many things coming up. We've got Baltimore. We've got corporate events. We have travel parties. We've got weekly meetings. We've got online events. And that's another thing. If you're meeting somebody doing those surveys, invite them to an online event. Um, and so that they can see it in the comfort of their home. The only thing about an online event is that you don't, you can't really tell if they're paying attention. What I find is for online events, nine times out of 10, I have to invite them to a second event. More, more, most people don't get started from a Zoom presentation. It's the Zoom presentation that, because, you know, you're, they're sitting there, 
and their phone rings, or they're sitting there and the baby starts to cry, or they're sitting there and their husband starts talking to them. So they're, sometimes they can't be fully um, 100%, pay, a, pay, pay 100% for attention at the time when they're at home and online. And so what I find is that tend, most, of my, most of my guests tend to miss something unless it's a one-on-one -on -one presentation via Zoom and I can talk to them and they're talking to me and we're going back and forth. And then when I see they're distracted, I just stop talking. But on a group Zoom, you can't really do that. So generally, you have to have something else to invite them to or a third, a, another, another event or at least a third-party validation. So. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for our training today. It is 9.56. I'm sorry for going a few minutes over. Uh, however, hopefully you got some information that you can use. And, um, and I'm, going to, I'm going to end our training for today. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to open it up. Did anybody have any issues, questions, or concerns? All right. Well, I am going to actually shut this down and I will see you guys next Saturday, 9 a.m., bright and early. Make sure you share this with your teams and share the recording as well. Thank you so much and have a good night. Have a good day. Bye-bye.